In the classic movie Song of the South, it starts out slow, but it really is an awesome movie. And if you've ever been to Disney and if you've ever run, rode the Splash Mountain ride, I say that. Apparently, Splash Mountain is no longer a ride and they no longer play the song. If you ever got to go to Disney and ride the Splash Mountain ride, then you heard zippity doo dah, zippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine heading my way. Zippity doo dah, zippity a. Mr. Bluebird's on my shoulder. It is the truth. It's actual. Everything is satisfactional. Zippity doo dah, zippity a. Wonderful feeling, wonderful day. But by virtue of the fact that life is actual, it sometimes seems anything but wonderful or satisfactional. And it was in the midst of such that Uncle Remus tries to convey wisdom to a young boy by storytelling. And he does a really good job of it. But he also teaches that there should be joy in life even when times are difficult. And that's a lot easier thing to say than it is to do. But the idea of having an older or more mature person to speak into your life, to teach and convey wisdom, is a great idea. In fact, you know people who have serious problems in their life. And the reason that they do is because they did not allow people to speak into their lives. At some point backwards, had they allowed somebody with more wisdom, with more maturity to speak into their life, then they probably, hopefully, would have wound up in a different place than where they wound up. But in the movie, there's a briar patch. It keeps coming up again and again and again in the movie. You don't want your life to end up in the briar patch. And if you let people speak into your life, you don't have to end up in the briar patch. Okay, I'm your pastor. That's my job is to speak into your life. But I can't help you if you don't let me. It's my wife's job to speak into your life, but she can't help you if you don't let her. Your parents should be able to speak into your life, but, but they can't do that if you don't let them. One of the things that you need to know, and it's why I wanted to start a series tonight on anxiety, but that series can wait is that God can lift us above discouragement. In other words, psychotherapy, for example, wants to help us manage our anxiety. It wants to help us manage our worry. But Jesus said, be anxious for nothing. How many times does the Bible tell us, worry not, fear not? So it's not that we should try to manage our worry. We shouldn't have to worry at all. And sometimes we need people to remind us of that. I'll be real honest. I wanted Brother Porter to preach tonight. I was going to set that up by, uh, I was going to set that up by Skype for him to just, you know, be on the TV tonight. But he was preaching in Indiana tonight, so, so I just felt like we needed to do something light. So in a minute, we're going to watch the movie Song of the South. I know we were supposed to watch it on the 29th. But the other two movies will be there on the 29th, and so we'll just go down the list. The next one would have been The Three Caballeros. Uh, we'll, we'll just watch that. But the Song of the South, as we watch it tonight, I want you to see the spiritual application. Think of Uncle Remus, if you will, as the Apostle Paul, who conveyed wisdom to a young man named Timothy. In 1 Timothy 6, the Apostle Paul told Timothy, he said, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. Will and I have had a lot of conversation over the last few days about science falsely so called. But in addition to that, Paul was warning Timothy to be careful about what he hears and about who he takes advice from and subsequently 
how he acts upon that advice. Because there's a lot of knowledge in the world. And it's not always good knowledge. You know, I talk about letting someone with more wisdom and more experience speak into your life. The truth is somebody's going to speak into your life. If it's not me, if it's not your parents, maybe it'll be Oprah Winfrey. God forbid. She's ruined more lives than, than math can count. And if it's not Oprah Winfrey, who knows? Maybe it'll be some idiot on TikTok. Or who knows who it might be. Maybe it'll be somebody you go to school with. Who knows who it'll be. But there's all kinds of, of knowledge in the world, if you will. It's not wisdom. And Paul wanted to protect Timothy from that. So he's like, hey, you know what? You need to be careful who you let speak into your life. You need to let someone speak into your life, but you need to be careful who it is. Because if you're not listening to a godly influence, you're going to be listening to an ungodly one. And so Paul wanted to protect Timothy. He wanted Timothy to grab hold of life. We're not supposed to be subject to the whims of empty speech and just everything that's floating around out there. He told Timothy, he said, you know, you've got an amazing destiny that the Lord will, will give you. In 1 Thessalonians 5, the apostle said, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. That whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. Acts 17, 28 says, For in him we live and move and have our being. And so, so we can have life in Christ. We can have life in the body of Christ, which is his church. Our lives can reflect the things that we see in the Bible. Or they can reflect the things that we see on TV and in popular culture and in the world around us. A lot of that may be entertainment, but it's, it's not real life. And so Paul is encouraging Timothy, let someone speak into your life, but make sure that that person is a godly influence. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 9, the apostles talking to the church at Philippi, and he encourages them in the same manner. He says, This I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that she may approve things that are excellent, that she may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ under the glory and praise of God. And so again, that we can just abound more in the things that God has for us. And we do that by approving the things that are excellent. Paul told the, the Colossians, he said, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth, for you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall also ye appear with him in glory. And so how, how do we have that abundant life? How do we have that life where we're not anxious? How do we have that life where we're not worried? We hide ourselves in Christ. You know, the truth is, is when we got saved, we became a new person. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We give our lives to Jesus and our sins are forgiven. He makes us a new person. We become almost like a newborn baby who has no past, but who's starting over in the world. And as a result, we now have a real life which is guided by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will empower us to walk each day in truth if we'll let him. And so we need to seek that wisdom from the Lord. We need to seek that wisdom from the Holy Spirit that's within us. We need to listen to wisdom from others who are more mature and let them speak into our lives. In this movie, it doesn't tell us if Uncle Remus was a father of his own children or not. But he was a moral and a spiritual father figure to a lot of children in the movie. And at the beginning of the movie, these kids try to go off and do their own thing. And they screw up. And had God not put Uncle Remus in their life, only God knows where they would have wound up. Or had they not listened to Uncle Remus, who knows where they might have ended up. And so thank God that he puts people in our lives. Because the truth is, is that you have to make a lot of big decisions in your life before you're old enough, wise enough, or mature enough to make them. And so let God put people in your life who will help you with the wisdom that you lack. And so just a few things to keep in mind as we watch the movie here in a minute. Father, pray that you will focus on the life that you've given us. Pray that you'll help us to walk out our days in wisdom and to your glory. Pray that you'll help us to see wisdom. 
in what those who love us are trying to say to us. Pray, Lord Jesus, that uh, our lives would glorify you as we open them up to all that you have for us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.